In this lesson, we're going to be transforming cosecant graphs. So it might be helpful to have your cosecant parent function in front of you just to remind yourselves what it looked like. So for cosecant, it does look similar to secant. Uh, the period is 2 pi. That's the horizontal distance needed to have an up and a downward part of the graph. Okay, notice that for the parent function cosecant, we have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis and then every multiple of pi after that. Let's state A through D. Notice that we're going to be um, reflecting cosecant and then also vertically stretching it by 2. Let's see, the amplitude is 2. I'm going to go ahead and get that down there. Uh, B is 3, and C and D are both 0. So the period won't change, and there's no shift up or down. Let's do the LVA and the RVA. So we take BX minus C. Now, instead of doing like what we did for uh, secant, where we set equal to negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, okay, remember, cosecant's two consecutive vertical asymptotes are at 0 and pi. So just like cotangent. Cosecant's just like cotangent. So this will get us one, uh, one half of the period, and then we can build the other one from there. Divide by 3 and divide by 3. Got a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. And then at pi over 3 over, uh, I don't know, just I'll make three tick marks, I guess, be a pi over 3. All right, so let's go ahead and draw another vertical asymptote. So that means 3 away here. And let's think about what that would be. If this is a third pi, this is another third pi. So that's 2 pi over 3 right here. So our period begins at x equals 0 and ends at 2 pi over 3. So it's been horizontally shrunk. So that took care of the vertical asymptotes, took care of b and c. I'm not shifting up or down, but I am multiplying all the y-coordinates by negative 2. So if you need to, remember the range for cosecant is this. And if I want to do um, negative 2 times, I'm not going to do negative 2 times the range. I'm just going to do 2 and then know I have to reflect it. So I'm going to do 2 times the range. Well, that doesn't change that infinity. That's negative 2. This is positive 2, and that's infinity. So we have a bigger gap. Uh, so negative 2, I think I'll just let each tick mark be a unit. This is 2. Okay, typically cosecant will open right here in the first set of uh, consecutive vertical asymptotes, but because of that negative, it's not going to open here, and it's not going to open down here either. We just got to slide down to negative 2 and halfway in between, which about right here, we will do our downward part of the graph. So the upward part of the graph will be halfway between these next two consecutive asymptotes and go up like this. So do we have that gap between negative 2 and 2? We do, so we're good to go. Period begins at 0 and ends at 2 pi over 3. So it looks like the period's 2 pi over 3. Okay, or take 2 pi and divide it by b. b was 3, so that makes sense. Uh, first vertical asymptote, I'm going to use a zero. You don't have to write that if you don't want to. And then it's always n times half this period. Well, that's just going to be pi over 3. And I'll leave off the zero, n pi over 3. Every third pi, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. Okay, for 6... State A through D. B is also 1, so C must be negative pi. And there's no D. So it looks like the only thing we're doing is actually shifting the cosecant graph left pi. Hmm, that should be easy. 
if I shift this graph left pi, then this graph will come over here and this graph down here will be here. Okay. And it looks like all the other information will be the same as the parent function if all I'm doing is moving it left. Okay. So bx minus c, so x plus pi equals, what was it, zero? And x plus pi equals pi. So I always use zero and pi for cosecant and cotangent. I'll subtract a pi and subtract a pi, that's zero. Mm, let's see, I will let uh, four tick marks be negative pi. So negative pi. And then x equals zero here. We have an asymptote there and then four over. And this will be pi. Okay, so this is the left of the two consecutive vertical asymptotes. Cosecant will start up from here at one because there's not any shift. I'll let two tick marks be one. Halfway in between, I will open up that part of the graph. And then two tick marks is negative one, halfway in between, and open that graph downward. So I still have that gap in here, which is good. And I'm not gonna take the time to fill this out. I'm just gonna say that this is all the same as the parent function, all the same as y equals cosecant x. You can do the same. All right. Let's see what else we have. B is going to be a third and no C or D. Take bx minus c, set it equal to zero and pi. So x over three equals zero, and x over three equals pi. Multiply both sides by three, multiply both sides by three, three pi over here. Ooh, this is gonna be stretched. All right. I'm gonna asymptote there. And I'll do four of them, that'll be three pi, and I need to do four more, and that must be six pi. Uh, we are, uh, we took care of B and C, we need to vertically stretch by two. So let's see, without having to write the range, what that means. Well, instead of negative one here, we'll have negative two. And then this was a one on the parent function, so that'll just be two. All right, so I'm gonna start up here at two and down here at negative two. There's no reflection, this is cosecant. This first parabola opens, parabola shape graph opens up. Go like that. And head down to y equals negative two, halfway in between, we'll put our maximum and open downward. Yes, we still have a gap, so we're good to go. Period starts at x equals six, ends at x, or x equals zero, ends at x equals six pi. That difference is six pi. Is that equal to taking two pi and dividing it by b, which is a third? Yes, it is. Vertical asymptotes start at zero, zero plus n times half the period. So that's just three pi, that's just three n pi. So all reals except x equals three n pi, makes sense. And the amplitude is two. Looks like we're going to reflect the cosecant graph and then shift it all up by a half unit. Okay, 
that half is your D value. So take BX minus C. Oh, that's easy. Oh, nothing changed. Always set for cosecant equal to zero and pi. Well, that's nice. All right, so we'll jump down here. Zero, one, two, three, four. I'll let that be pi. One, two, three, four. So the end of the period's at two pi. Okay, we took care of B and C. Okay, we have a reflection, and then we also have a shift up a half. So let me go back to the parent functions range. We can multiply by negative one if we want, but uh, what that's gonna do is just flip-flop these two, so that really has no effect with that negative one. Let's just go to adding a half. So I wanna do the range plus a half. Adding to that doesn't matter. Adding a half gets you to negative one half. Adding a half gets you to three halves. So now we can kind of see our gap is from negative half to three halves. All right, so I'll call this negative half. So that's positive half, two halves, three halves are right here. Okay, let me make sure I'm doing this right. So, <clears throat> so I'm reflecting cosecant. So instead of opening up here, I gotta flip it down, not from here, but come down to y equals negative half and open up the graph off of this y value. And then over here, we would open up the graph. Like that. N times half the period, the amplitude is just one. Makes sense. All the vertical asymptotes are at every multiple of pi. Yep. And lastly, example nine. So B is one, so we can certainly say C is positive pi over four. Thank goodness there's no D value. All right, take BX minus C, set it equal to zero, and then equal to pi. Add a pi over four, so that's five pi over four. Let's get those two down and then generate a another one. Um, I think I'll have enough room this way. That'll be pi over four. That's one pi over four. That's two, three, four, five pi over Ooh, one, two. Oh, I'm right at the edge. So that's five pi over four. And then count four more. Ooh, just barely. So five pi over six, seven, eight, nine pi over four would put me at another vertical asymptote, nine pi over four. That makes sense. Because two pi away from pi over four would be nine pi over four. Okay, we took care of B and C. A is a vertical stretch, so that means that my range will go uh, the negative three and then start again at three. So I have a bigger gap. All right, so negative one, negative two, negative three. One, two, three, this is three. All right, and then from here, do I have a reflection? No, I do not. So between these first two asymptotes up here at three, halfway in between here, 
up and then drop down here our downward part of the graph. Remember, don't put 5 pi over 4 because that's not a complete period. It's 9 pi over 4. And subtracting these gives 8 pi over 4 or 2 pi. I'll go ahead and do the amplitude. I want to get that out of the way. X equals, we'll start with pi over 4 and add n times half of that or just n pi. Hopefully you're feeling more comfortable with graphing cosecant functions and now it's just time to practice.